Hi. Today you're going to do a lifting class. So I've got a stack of dumbbells here. I've got um, three pounds, five pounds, eight pounds, ten pounds, and fifteen pounds. Three, five, eight, ten, fifteen. You can have anything that you want for a range. I suggest a high, medium, and low. We're just going to warm up here. Uh, let's straddle the bench, or you could do a body weight squat. So I usually have my groups just step wide right here and sit because I like to have everyone aiming to break 90 degrees at the knee line when you're squatting. And if that makes you uncomfortable, I put people here because if you do feel unsafe, you just sit right down. Run your deep squat with something right underneath you. And if you're not ready to take it that low, you are just warming up. You don't have to, but if you are ready, go ahead and touch way down to that bench if you do happen to have a bench. If not, you don't need it. Just sit, stand, sit, stand. Take a quick stretch here. Just take a stationary leg, leave that down, and you want your knee pointed down here. Take a second to lengthen out that quad, chest open, nice control when you stand here and stretch, and then just take another second to try to press your foot right to that glute as you're stretching. And just switch sides, other side, stretch that quad. Same thing here. Try not to be slouchy. You want to have that knee that you have the leg that you're stretching pointed down. Open up your chest. This can double as a shoulder and chest little opener there. Plus three, two, switch again. But this time let's do a knee lift. Switch your exercise. Just warm up. Just move a bit. And I'm doing a wrap around to the front of me here to try to loosen up the upper back. Plus four, three. Now let's squat again, again to just warm up. So you could do a pretty narrow squat. You could do half a squat. But you're always aiming to sit nice and low with your chest up and your back flat. Four more squats, four. And then we'll take that quad stretch again and two more. Stand up, pick a leg. Then again, keep that knee pointed down. If you don't feel it here, just press your hip forward a bit. Okay, and let's switch sides. Other quad. Get chest open, breathe out. Now let's set that foot down and go back to knee lifts. And again, I'm moving my arms. You don't have to. Um, I'm moving my arms because I'm kind of loosening up my upper back, like I said before. And I'm trying to do a little bit of a chin tuck. Now let's go ahead and switch that and open up. Lift your chest. Lift it up. Last five. Three. And then just take a one leg out. Same arm, reach overhead, kind of stretch to the side, and switch that out. Okay, and now let's do something a little different to warm up here. Um, let's combine a sumo squat towards a plie. Um, I've got a really wide stance here. I try to follow the lines of something on the floor, uh, usually. So for me, I'm going to put my feet right up to the inside of my mat. Your heels want to kick back. Try to put your feet out and let your heel follow the toe line. From there, you want to try to be able to sit. So for me, I follow lines a lot. You're trying to draw a rectangle here in this space. So not a dance or a plie. We're trying to combine a sumo squat and a plie here. It's inner thigh. We're just heating up. We can maybe do this later. If I remember it, just lift, lift. Six. You're trying to sit as low as you can and then lift from there. Eight more. Eight. 
And if you need to, you're coming up a little higher at this point. Four, three, go ahead and stand up. That heats you up real fast. Again, take that reach. And another reach. Okay, and then let's stretch out the legs real quick here. Take one leg forward and just put that opposite hand down. Take a knee and then twist open. Okay, and then switch. I'm gonna take that other foot forward. Take a knee, top of the foot down. Open up for a stretch here. Step up. Okay, let's get a set of weights to warm up your upper half. Um, so I would go medium to light. I'm going to choose a five pound pair, actually an eight pound, eight pound pair. So I'm gonna just stand right in front of you and start with an upright row, up. We pull up. I remember upright row because it looks like you're rowing a boat. Upright, up. Down. So I'm just going to cue to the tempo of the music. If you need to slow down, do that. But I like to often play around with the tempo while you're lifting. Keep your chest up, shoulders down and back. So again, we're just warming up your arms to start here. You want nice, controlled forearms and wrists. Don't let the weight just dangle in your arms. We're just pulling up for four, three, two, one more. Now bring the arms to your sides, elbows underneath you, and just do a basic bicep curl. When you're doing your bicep curl, you want your elbow right underneath your shoulder. Last two. There's fancier version, but we'll get there. Take the arms up, and now shoulder press. I'm going to start with a short, I call it a short shoulder press. Not quite your full range, but at least you're breaking 90 at the elbow line and then pushing past it. Come up and down, up, down, two more. Okay, then bring the arms down. We're just going to crisscross these weights. You're going overhead for a tricep, a tricep press overhead. When you come with these, you want your elbow under or on top of your shoulder here. And try to keep those elbows pointed to the ceiling. Heat up the back of the arms. Last three, two, one more. Bring it overhead. And then let's heat up your back real quickly here. About a quarter sit or a half a sit. Push your butt back. You have a hip hinge here so your back is flat. Right, the arms are right in front of you, and you're coming into a reverse fly here. Do you want to be able to break your side plane and pull past it to activate your back muscles? Last four. This is your reverse fly. If you need a little assist, you bend your arms a little. If you need it harder, you pull up wider. Okay, let's set those down. And do a quick stretch, roll the arms back. And then we'll get to work in here. Reach again to a side, just pick a side. And then that other side. And now do some rounding and opening. I always, always do this. Take a half a sit in those legs, great soft bend in the legs. And then I say wrap around an imaginary ball. So you're tucking your tailbone and rounding your back. So come right around an exercise ball. So you're stretching your spine and now flex your spine. Flex it. Again, round it and flex it. Open your chest. One more. Round your back. Stretch your spine. Wake it up and then flex it. Okay, let's get lifting. Um, so let's take your medium to heavy, anywhere 8, 10, 12 pounds. Um, so I'm going to grab an 8 and go with a bicep curl. And when you're doing your bicep curls, don't swing it. Okay, and don't push your elbows back too far. 
just nice and controlled. Lift, come down, lift, and then come down. Take your biceps and a little bit of back to start here. Take these arms right up to chest and shoulder height. I call this the reverse chin-up. And I'm going to explain it because usually there's a pull-up bar, right? Or a chin-up bar. So you're doing a chin-up in reverse. So push it up, push it up. This heats up your back really nicely. The trick is to stop when your arm is just below that shoulder height. And keep going up, up. A reverse chin up is what I've named it. Up, up. Do more. Okay, bring it down. Bicep curl again. Curl and curl. Last one. Back up to that reverse chin up. Lift and lift. Keep your core tight here. You want your hips under you. You want your stomach flexing for you? One more. Bring the arms back down and bicep curl. Do four more. Three. Two. Okay, we're going to bring these weights down and swap out for a little heavier. Um, if you don't have heavier, what you can do is combine weights. Like this would be an eight and a three. You got 11 pounds. I happen to have a 10 pound pair. So I'm going to pick up a little bit heavier. You're going to go back to a little bit more back. So we're going to, I say quarter sit or half a sit. And I tell groups, um, alternate between hinging forward, sitting down, hinging forward, and find that sweet spot. Find that sweet spot where you can definitely feel those arms coming behind you. And you need to flex and use those muscles to hold those weights up. Even if it's for just a split second. And if you ever want to work this a little harder, you have to give yourself more gravity to fight against. So for something like this, you would come a little deeper. A little more forward. Most people usually do their fly around here. Last two. Okay, stand up and now curl with these ones. Bicep curl still. Last four. Three. Two. One more. Now do your reverse chin up. But a little bit heavier. Lift. Press. Press. In a couple more, we're coming right back down for that reverse fly. Two more. One more. Okay, exhale. Get that stomach tight. Hinge forward. Arms have that soft bend. And you start pulling up and back. So make sure you're not jerking knees and cranking back. Learn the movement and then you can add the fancy stuff. Slow and controlled to start. All right, complete about four more. Do what you can. Three. One more. Exhale, stand up, and bicep curl again. Do one more bicep curl. Bring the arms up and reverse that chin up. You might be noticing these might be getting a little bit harder. If you can fight that urge to drop those arms low, you're going to feel this one. If you can, keep it narrow on these forearms. Don't let it be too wide. Two more presses. Last one. Set them down. Okay, let's do your legs real quick. Not, not all your legs real quick, but I'm going to do one leg forward and just sit here tight here in a lunge position. So you're in a split squat. I explain to people a lunge is a split squat. You'll hear that in the fitness world. A split squat. So you cut yourself in half from top to bottom. This leg should look like a perfect squat. So if you have that in mind, this is how low your squat needs to go. And I don't know if that angle is weird or not, but getting down this low is real hard on that back leg. 
So you want to be not shifting back and leaning back. You got to find, a, I like the word sweet spot. You got to find that sweet spot where you feel that front leg working. And just hold. You have five counts. Four, three. Let's do the other side real quick. So again, try to get all the way down. You want a 90 in the front, 90 in the back. And your stomach is tight. Nice controlled breathing. Breathe these out. If you need to modify, you're just a little bit taller here. Still trying to get that back leg towards the ground. Give it eight more counts and we'll stand up. And we're gonna use that bench for a little bit of height here. Come up. You might even have books laying around or something that you can step on that's sturdy enough for you. Take a leg to get on that bench. And we're going to take your back leg and just start making a little pendulum back there. So I'm starting up a little high so that you can see that this can start nice and then you can finish pretty rough. If you need it harder, you sit yourself down and try to get bigger range on that back leg. So on my front leg, I'm pushing from midfoot to heel not on my toes. You're trying to give as little weight as possible to whatever leg is behind you. Last four, three, two, switch sides, put the other leg up. So you might notice the lower you got, the more glute you will get. So you just did an, iso uh, an isolation on each leg. Now you're shaking things up and giving your leg an unstable surface. Same thing here. If you need a break, you stand a little taller. If you want it harder, that foot is just going really far back there. Side to side. Eight more counts. Last five. Three, two, Come up, back to our legs here. So pick a leg, you're gonna hold that sit, hold. Trying to get this leg parallel to the floor or deeper. A little hard because that back leg might be touching the floor. Stand up and switch. Staying still can be hard after heart rate picking up from doing those single leg pendulums. Standing in three, two, back to your platform or wherever you are putting that leg on. Let me show you a different view. So I've got it here. So this is modified. You can also take a break whenever you need to. You want to scoop that leg back and make your range bigger on that pendulum leg, but don't shift too much weight back there. You're working your front guy. Four, three, quickly switch as soon as you can. So modified, my back foot is closer to the bench. A little more aggressive. And if I want to bring it full swing back there, I'm really trying to crank that leg side to side back there and stay low on this front one. Just five, four, three, two, stand up. Now let's get your dumbbells and move on. I'm going to go with a 10 pound pair to start doing shoulder. If you know me, I am a huge fan of shoulders, shoulder exercises, because all of our muscles up there tie into the shoulder. You want a strong shoulder pair on yourself. Go back to that upright row that we warmed up with, so now you've got a little heavier of a pair with you. A lot of times I see this, okay, like this, okay, and now those dumbbells are hinging from that elbow. Come right up. This is just your basic upright row. Breathe out. 
out. All right, so let those dumbbells come up. And if you need more, you can pull back a little once you've peaked over your chest. Now let's mess around here. I want you to go to belly button to chest. That's it. Belly, chest. Belly button to chest. Short, right? So we've shortened our range. Two more here. Full range. All the way up. All the way up. All the way down. All the way up. All the way down. All the way up. The way up. Before you start flipping those weights. Don't do that. And all the way down before you lock out. Don't lock out. Keep going. Four. Three. Two. Shorten it again. Chest to belly. Chest to belly. Last one. All right, now pick up even heavier. Because we're going to go overhead for one dumbbell. One heavy dumbbell. Um, if you don't have a heavy, you could crisscross your two tens, your two eights. Um, so sure, I'll do it with the intent that you might not have a heavy dumbbell, so I'll do two tens. So I'll take 20, and we're going overhead for that tricep push-up, or tricep press. Down and up. So here we're trying to get your elbow to the ceiling. Four more. Just finish out one more press here and then bring those dumbbells or dumbbell right in front of you. Okay, and hold that. Sit with a goblet squat. Sit right down. Sit, stand, sit, stand. If you do have the one dumbbell, you say goblet squat because oftentimes people hold it like this. Goblet squat, like you're drinking out of a goblet. Sit down, sit, press up. Squeeze your glutes on the way up. Put your squat positioning wherever you're comfortable right now. Sit, drive, sit, drive chest up, chin up. Don't cut off your breathing. Four more, four. You want to get pretty pumped up here because we stand and do upright row next. Go back to where we started with that upright row. So you could have a medium to medium heavy weight. So I'm going to up it to the 15s here. Up, down. Last four. And then we'll shorten your range. In two. Shorten it. Belly button to chest. Two more. Full range. Up, up, two more. Last one. Belly button to chest for four. Three, two, and now take that dumbbell size that you want for overhead. Overhead tricep. As you are pressing overhead. Last three. One more. Bring it back in front and squat again. Keep your face up, chest up. I tell my people, I always pretend I'm writing on my chest and everyone needs to be able to read it. If you're body dipping, you're gonna hurt your back. <laughs> and you're not squatting deep enough. Drop, press up, four more. Last two, one more, stay up. Okay, now let's do a heavier bicep set. So if you did eights, go to your heaviest. If you did tens and you don't have any more, combine your weights if you can. Now you're going to do a bicep curls with a heavier pair. Slow yourself down. Come up for two counts and down for two. And then we'll mess around and play with the negatives 
in a couple more. Two more curls at a two count lift. One more. Now this time, come up on one count and drop. Three, four. Bicep curl, drop. Three, four. Up, down. Now it's not this. Not that. Don't do that. Up, down. You feel the curl. It should be challenging. If it's not, pick up something heavier. Four. Curl up one, down, three, four. You're dragging out the time it takes to get down. One more. Set them down. And you're going to go right into a plank here. High plank. High plank. Hold your plank. Planks can be very difficult. Um, try to give yourself as little surface area as you can handle to be on. So for right now, I'm on hands and my toes, trying to stay up. You modify by coming to your knees in a high plank or elbows and toes right here. Last eight, you want to be squeezing everything in that front side. Okay, step up and come up. Back to that heavy bicep curl. Up for two, down for two. One, two, down for two. Again, up and down. One more for the two up, two down. Now come all the way up on the one count and drop three, four. One, two, three, four. You're working the negative. I'll try to remember to do another example of working the negative. Do two more of these. Up, down, three, four. One more. Down and then go right into that plank as soon as you can get there. Hold that plank. Okay, so you got to talk yourself through this. If this is very challenging, you should be feeling it by now, by the way. Um, you want to be feeling shoulders, chest, stomach, quads, shins, everything that is facing the ground, you should be feeling. Keep squeezing your stomach, crunch it like it's an accordion. Upper abs to the bottom. Get it 12, last eight, eight, six. All you have to do is hold yourself up. Three, two, one, stand up. Okay, let's go back to your plie. These are brutal. They are brutal, brutal. I'm gonna change my line here. Okay, I'm gonna put my feet back out and remember, you wanna be getting that rectangle type look. It's fine if you look more like an A, you will get there, or an A with some bends in the side. You're getting to your lowest point and what you don't want is to tip forward. Let me turn to the side. Um, you want your toes out. I'm trying to sit, hold those legs out. Remember you want that inner thigh here and don't tip forward. You should try to be as upright as possible and as low as possible. Hang in there. These are hard. I'll try to keep it less than a minute. Pick up your right heel. If you can't do that, don't do it. Just stay as low as you can on that left side. Eight counts. Six, five, give it four, three, switch. You got that right leg down, left leg is up. And your right leg is your worker. Sit as low as you can. Eight, six, four, three. Here's the doozy. Both heels up. Hold it. Try to be low. Eight more counts. Last eight, six, last four, three. Heels down. Stand up. Hopefully you made it through that. Um, so let's get your, go back to your medium set so we can talk about your Arnold press for a second. We're gonna start getting into your chest 
We heated it up a little with those planks. I would do a medium size dumbbell. Uh, so I'm gonna go for eights here. Whatever your medium is, pick up the medium so you can learn the set. I'm coming with a chest fly, open up, press, and keep going with that. So in, out, up, down. In, out, up, down. In, out, up. You're just learning the set here, or preparing to take a lot more weight. So I'm gonna double my weight and go to a 15 pound here. I know it's not completely double, but it's what I've got. <laughs> okay, so in, whatever you're doing next, you just wanna up the weight as much as you can. If you have a shoulder injury, don't go heavy. Don't go too heavy if you're not comfortable with going overhead heavy. So I'm gonna pick up 15s. You do anything that's heavy for you. And then we're gonna play with a little bit of range here on this. Now come in with that chest fly. Open. You'll come up and down. Get another one under your belt with a little heavier weight here. Okay, and I should have said it before, but keep your feet about hip distance apart. Get a good flex on your core. My legs are squeezing, arms are up, we're ready. In four counts, we're bringing it to a four count Arnold press. Come in, in, out, up. Honestly, when you're doing an Arnold press, you wanna be pretty fatigued within six to eight reps. This is a big move, it should be heavy. Get about three more Arnold presses if you can. Finish out one more. Okay, bring those weights down, but don't put them down fully yet. We're gonna come right to 90 degrees on those arms. So my arms are tired, so they're starting to shift back. Don't let that happen. We get tired, find that threshold, and try to push past them. So you're holding at 90, hold. And I'm letting my fingers go. Don't death grip it. Put it in the muscle, not in the digits. Six, five, four, three. Bring the arms all the way up again. And now we're right here. I bet my elbow just below shoulder line, so get to about there. We're gonna peak right up to that line. Four, real small movement. About four inches, up, down. Up, but we've still got our heavies. Up, up, two more. Last one, bring them back in and hold at 90. Hold, hold, hold. Keep going, don't use, don't waste your energy on that grip, that squeeze right now, that's not gonna help us. Put it to that muscle, four, three, two, bring them down here. Now you're gonna move your lunge. So if you don't feel comfortable with moving lunges, don't do it, um, or just set the weights down and try it without the dumbbells first.